food production. Energy and materials are lost at every stage in a food chain. That's a key phrase to remember. And I strongly suggest you start every answer that's to do with food production with that statement. Now the reason why is because animals in a food chain will produce waste materials, faeces and urine, and energy and materials are present in these waste materials, so they're lost from the food chain. And animals will also lose energy in maintaining a constant body temperature. They'll lose energy in muscle contractions or movement. And so to produce food efficiently, we have to look at ways of reducing energy losses. Certain types of farming work very hard at reducing energy losses. You can reduce them by restricting an animal's movement. In some systems, animals are kept in very small pens and prevented from moving around at all. Also, if you keep them in a heated environment, then that helps to reduce energy losses because they're not having to use quite so much energy in maintaining their own body temperature. So this means that more energy can be turned into growth or biomass. So less is lost and more is usefully transferred into growth or biomass. Food chains with fewer stages are more efficient because less energy is lost. Energy is lost at every stage, so the fewer the stages there are, the less energy is lost. A lot of people tend to use respiration in their answers to this. There's never a mark given for the use of the word respiration when we're talking about energy losses. It's too vague, it refers to too many things. So energy is lost in maintaining constant body temperature and in movement, but it's not lost in respiration. Don't use that in your answer. Factory farming or intensive farming is a system which tries very hard to reduce the energy losses in animals. Now the advantages of this system of farming are that the animals are kept in a very small space compared to free range farming and more food is produced than in free-range farming because less energy is lost for the reasons that we've already given because they're prevented from moving around they're kept in a heated environment so more of their food is converted into growth or biomass but this system of farming has a lot of disadvantages it's very poor welfare for the animals it's very stressful for them to be kept in these cramped unnatural conditions and being kept in such overcrowded conditions means that diseases can spread very quickly. So quite often farmers will give these animals antibiotics on a daily basis just as a preventative measure to stop them getting diseases. With an increasing world population we have to produce food in a sustainable way and sustainable means producing it in such a way that we have enough for now while preserving supplies for future generations. Sustainable fishing, for example, means obtaining the maximum harvest of fish now while leaving enough breeding stock to provide us with food in future years because fish stocks are in decline and certain species are in danger of disappearing altogether from some areas so therefore we have to manage our harvesting of fish stocks. There are lots of different approaches to managing the harvesting of fish stocks. One is to establish quotas. So fishing vessels are only allowed to land a certain weight of fish or a certain species of fish or a certain size of fish. It's quite strictly controlled. Controlling net size is another way of controlling the harvesting. This net size on the top layer there it's got small holes in the mesh, so that catches much smaller fish than the net behind it with the larger holes. If you catch the really small fish, you might be catching the juveniles, the young stock, which means that there's nothing left to grow to maturity and become next year's breeding stock. So the fish stocks will decline year on year. Mycoprotein production is where it's at. There's a fungus called Fusarium, which is found to be very suitable for producing protein for human consumption. Mycoprotein, now myco is a prefix, it means anything to do with fungi, myco. 
Now this mycoprotein is grown in large fermenters and the protein in fusarium takes the form of long fibres which are largely protein. Now these fermenters containing fusarium are provided with oxygen so that the fusarium has oxygen for respiration. Glucose and minerals are pumped in to provide the raw materials for growth and they're kept at the optimum temperature. Bubbles of air are blown in, firstly to provide oxygen, but also because it helps to stir it up. If you have big paddles in there, rotating paddles, and that's going to break up the fibres, which will make the texture slightly unpleasant. So compressed air bubbles is a useful way of circulating the contents. So this shows a fermenter. You've got air being blown in on the left, waste gases, mostly carbon dioxide, will be allowed to bubble out. Glucose syrup and minerals are provided. And then there's some sort of cooling system. Quite often it's a cold water jacket or a cold water coil, as shown here. Why is it likely to be getting very warm in there? Well, if you think about it, if you're providing glucose and oxygen, there's going to be a really high rate of respiration by these fusarium fungi. They're really fun guys and heat is released as a byproduct of respiration so it needs to be kept cold or cool anyway so that they don't kill themselves by overheating and then the mycoprotein is harvested and purified and you'll probably buy it in a packet of frozen something or other so last lot of practice questions then. Hooray, that's the end of Biology Unit 3. Test yourself and then in a minute check your answers. So check your answers then to the last set of questions. Well done. Go back over anything you're not too sure about. If there's something that needs explaining then your teacher is the best person to do that. But Good luck in your exams.